Hello, this Science of Sport video looks at National Sport and Exercise Science Unit 2 Functional Anatomy. Um, this is part three of B1, Learning Aim B, all about the cardiovascular system. And we are looking at the location, anatomy and function of the cardiovascular components. This particular video, part three, looks at blood and the composition of blood. Your specification then asks you to be able to understand and describe and, and uh, explain the function of these four components of blood. I'm sure some of them you've heard of before, but let's have a look. So blood's pretty critical. Um, it, it amounts to 7% of your body weight. We have a fair bit of it. Uh, males have a little bit more than females, so males in total have about five to six litres, women four to five litres. Generally, males are structured you know, larger than females and therefore need to account to that. And you won't need to know any kind of detail about blood types, but obviously we have slightly different construction of blood and slightly different types. So blood's critical for us to exist, to live, but certainly to function as, as athletes and, and perform in sport. Now, when we want to break down um, or look separately at the components of blood, the equipment that we use is called a centrifuge. So if you were to extract or take a sample of blood, it looks generally reddish, depending on the type of blood it is, whether it's arterial or venous blood, but it generally looks reddish. If we whiz it around in this thing called a centrifuge, basically each of the component parts separates because it is of different sort of densities. And if you were to look at this um, after the centrifuge, you get this more test tubey kind of version of things. And this then makes it easier to look at the separate components of blood um, and what blood is made up of. So you can see that the over half of blood, the you know, the content of blood, so about 55% of blood is made up of something called plasma. And what you will need to appreciate is that plasma is mainly a watery substance, and we'll look at it on a, on a separate slide. The other 45% are the bits, the bits that are carried around in plasma. These are the solids. This is the liquid. So blood is 55% fluid plasma and about 45% solid parts, solid bits. And those three types of solid parts are platelets, white blood cells and red blood cells. And what this clearly shows is that actually the solid part is predominantly made up of red blood cells. Red blood cells we know already are critical to us to exist, to live and certainly to perform as sports performers. White bloods are important for us to protect us and so are platelets to protect us in a slightly different way. Just also note that other things dissolve into the plasma, are carried around in the plasma in a dissolved form. And we also distribute in our blood, not just these cells, but other nutritious components like proteins, like glucose. So plasma is the means with which we carry around stuff in our blood. Plasma is like the train are, you know, traveling around the track, the tubes, the blood vessels carrying stuff. And the solids are like the passengers on the train, the things that are being transported around. So let's look a little bit more closely at plasma itself. So this is the liquid portion of blood. It's about 55% of its total volume. And plasma is mostly made up of water. It looks straw colored. Um, in substance. So it's a straw coloured liquid. And as I've just said, plasma is basically what transports stuff for us in our blood vessels. Things like glucose, things like protein are dissolved and carried around in it, as are gases. So not all oxygen, because most oxygen is transported by red blood cells, but some oxygen also diffuses into the plasma and is carried around in the plasma. CO2 is transported in the form of carbonic acid in plasma. So most CO2 is transported in plasma, dissolved in plasma in the form of carbonic acid. Some CO2 is attached to hemoglobin, um, but most is in the form of carbonic acid in the plasma. A little bit of oxygen is dissolved in the plasma.
So plasma is really important for us. If you were to become he dehydrated, you haven't drunk enough through the day, you basically don't have enough fluid in your body and this volume of plasma will decrease. Your blood will become thicker, your blood will become more viscous and your poor little heart will have to work harder to circulate this blood, to circulate, to push around these solids because there's less watery substance to it. So it's bad to become dehydrated. Okay, so let's look at this solid um, components of blood. We know already plasma is about 55% of your blood volume. The other 45% is made up of these three solid components, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets. Um, you don't have to necessarily know the proper names, but you may do erythrocytes, leukocytes and thrombocytes, but red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets. Now we know a little bit about red blood cells already from our bone content, possibly from our respiratory system content. The purpose of red blood cells is to transport oxygen around the body for us in the blood. They have within them haemoglobin and when oxygen attaches to haemoglobin it becomes oxyhemoglobin. Please learn that word. That's the proper name for haemoglobin carrying oxygen around. Now given that the main purpose of red blood cells is to carry oxygen. They can carry a little bit of um, CO2 too, but we need oxygen to be able to diffuse through these walls. And that's the reason why they aren't just sort of spheres. They are what we call biconcave. They, are ex they have extra shape, extra curve to them rather than just being oval, if you like. The biconcave shape gives extra surface area and the extra surface area allows more surface for diffusion. So structurally, they are biconcave to give greater surface area for diffusion of gases and oxygen in particular. Now, hopefully you know already that we have lots and lots and lots of red blood cells. We have about, as an adult, about 25 trillion red blood cells circulating at any time. Um, and we need to continually reproduce uh, them because they have a very short lifespan. So they die regularly and they need to be replaced regularly. So we make lots and lots and lots. We make millions per second to replace them. You may or may not know already that the hormone that stimulates the, the production of red blood cells by the red blood, uh, bone marrow in the bones is called erythropoietin. And that some, sometimes gets abbreviated to EPO. At worst, please learn EPO. EPO is the hormone that stimulates the production of red blood cells. We have it naturally produced in our body. You may be aware that some endurance athletes may um, inject themselves with synthetic EPO, so man-made EPO, because they want to produce more red blood cells for their endurance events. Um, in terms of this unit, just know that EPO is the hormone that stimulates the production of red blood cells in the red bone marrow, in our epiphysis, in our long bones. Now, looking a little bit more closely at haemoglobin, so our red blood cell is made up of heme groups. Now, each heme group has an iron there, so you can see the four iron components there. Each iron component will um, attach to one pair of oxygen. So oxygen are in pair, remember it's um, O2, so pairs of oxygen. So here we have the a pair of oxygen, a pair of oxygen, a pair of oxygen, and the fourth would attach over here. So when um, haemoglobin is full and completely topped up with oxygen, it can carry a total of four pairs of oxygen. So blood leaving the lungs, leaving the heart, going out to the body would be fully saturated with oxygen. It would have four pairs of oxygen in each haemoglobin. Blood returning from the muscles would have less, it, we call that deoxygenated. So some of these 
pairs of oxygen would have diffused and gone into the muscles and be used. And so the blood returning to the heart and then up to the lungs would have maybe two or three pairs of oxygen only. Then at the lungs, it reoxygenates and tops up these. And so the blood leaving the lungs goes away again with four pairs of oxygen. So you need to appreciate that hemoglobin carries oxygen and it can carry a total of four pairs of oxygen per hemoglobin. This is a really important phrase. Hemoglobin has a high affinity for oxygen. It loves oxygen. It wants to generally hold on to it, obviously because its job is to transport it and carry it around. And in total, hemoglobin can carry four pairs of oxygen. Right, let's move on, look at white blood cells, leukocytes. Primarily, these are important for protecting you from infection and um, from bacteria. So there are different kinds of white blood cells. You will not need to know the different names of the different types of blood cells. Just know collectively we have white blood cells transported in our blood um, by the plasma to fight infection, to protect us, to encapsulate or surround any anti uh, any bacteria and destroy them. So they're really important for protecting us from infection. These are larger than red blood cells. So if I go back to this slide, you can see the white blood cells tend to be larger than the other cells. And again, they don't live long. So we have to continually reproduce them in our bone marrow because they have a lifespan of only hours. So again, produced in um, our bone marrow. Platelets then. So platelets, if you damage blood vessels and you have blood leaking from blood vessels, your platelets are essential to try to reduce that blood loss, try to uh, seal that damaged vessel. So they're really important for protecting blood loss. And the way they do this is that they form a scab to try to and, and, and basically plug up the, the damage. So let me just show you this slide here. So if we damage a blood vessel and blood leaks, the platelets come into play. Their role is to work with the fibrin there to stick together, to form a scab with the white blood cell. Uh, Yep, sorry, with the white cells, the white cells will be preventing any infection and the platelets stick together to form this clot or this scab. Qu to quickly go back and summarise, platelets form a scab to temporary slot bleeding. They stick together to, to clot or to plug up the damaged vessel and to prevent blood loss. They they only live seven to nine days and again are produced in the bone marrow. So they are really important to protect us from damage. And that's that really. So the summary here is given red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, um, plasma is 55%. The, the solids are about 45%. Most of the solids are left uh, are made up of red blood cells. But this gives you a nice little overview of the, the three different types of solid components of blood. In terms of exam questions, here you go. Two marks explain the function of red blood cells. And here's your answer. Ex describe the function of platelets, two marks. Stop bleeding, forming a clot, blood uh, plug a damaged blood vessel. Nice and easy questions there to understand.